Hello, everyone, and welcome to Be Internet Awesome. Hopefully, you're having some great time here, uh, and you've had some time, amazing time in the morning. Um, my name is Jonathan, and I'm going to be like your MC and host, and uh, working in the background. But I'm going to hand it over to Susan to introduce everything and uh, and get this show on the road. Absolutely. Hello, Jonathan, and hello, everyone who is out there, out there watching live with us right now. We're super excited to have you here to talk about uh, being awesome on the internet, and the internet really is awesome. So today, we're talking about uh, Google's Be Internet Awesome, and I want to introduce you to a few things, a, a couple guests in just a minute. But again, you know, Jonathan and I, we're here. Uh, I'll be sharing some content, and Jonathan's going to be there in the background. And we have some extra special friends here with us today. I'm going to start and I'm going to hand it over to George. George, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, of course. Thanks so much, Susan. And, and hi, everybody. Uh, my name is George Ortiz. I'm the guy on, on, on your left on, on, on the slide here. Um, happy to be here and, and happy to kind of uh, uh, be listening in and, and, and kind of working through the session uh, with Susan and Jonathan. Uh, I work for Google uh, here in Canada. I've been with uh, with Google uh, for about six years now. And the question I get asked uh, right after the kind of, oh, wow, cool, you work for Google is, what exactly do you do at Google? And um, I, I'm an account executive. And, and the easiest way that I could kind of explain that is that uh, myself and my team look after some of the top uh, companies uh, in Canada, uh, particularly in the automotive space, so cars. Um, it's a, it's, a, it's a vertical that I'm very passionate about. And we help them uh, through a variety of different things, mainly on um, how to get their messages out uh, to people in Canada who may be interested uh, in their vehicles. Uh, two, uh, kind of help them uh, understand uh, consumers a little bit more, more. So, you know, what has changed in terms of how um, people are buying vehicles and things have changed a great deal in the last year or so. Um, and then second, and then lastly is, is, is what does the future hold? What does the future hold for them? Um, you know, something as simple as filling your car with gasoline, uh, may look very differently in the future, uh, as you move to things like electric vehicles or battery powered vehicles. So we help them, um, get their messaging across, understand that space a little bit more and help them really, um, um, get insights into new and, and kind of emerging uh, trends uh, in, in this space. So I think that's the best way that I can explain kind of what I do over at Google. Thank you so much, George. Uh, we are so lucky to have some real Googlers here today, people who work at Google. Uh, with, Char uh, with George today, we have Charles as well. Charles, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do with yeah. Google? Yeah, of course. Um, hi, everybody. I, my name is Charles, and I work with George at Google. So I've been a little bit uh, just shorter than 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 uh, George in the tenure. I've been with Google for a bit over five years, um, and I am an engineer helping George and and and, and now um, advertisers or companies uh, build more efficient ads um, to help them deliver the messages uh, uh, in a better in a, in a better way, um, and also helping to uh, going through all the data that that uh, we have. Um, and analyze them and again yeah, give them insights on how they can kind of better prepare the future. Um, uh, yeah, so happy to be here and uh, looking forward to uh, the session today. Awesome, cool. I love that you guys are talking about messaging and how you share your message because how you share your message matters. And I know so many of you kids out there have, have had some opportunities to learn on the internet lately, and you're getting these great digital skills about how to share messages. So this is really awesome to have these Googlers here today. And today we're actually going to call them Googlers because when Googlers work with teachers and work with students, they get the uh, title of Googler. So welcome to our Google Googlers today. We are really, really excited to talk about uh, the internet. Little fun joke here. It says, Grandma, mm -hmm, what was life like before the internet? Right? Because some of us remember a time when there was no internet. Uh, and Grandma says, hmm, good question. Let's Google it. <laughs> uh, we know that the internet is everywhere. It's in all the things we do. And I know in my own life, I do remember a time 
before the internet. But I know for a lot of you students out there, the internet's just been around, it's been a part of your life. And as we you know, start becoming more and more involved in these digital spaces, it's important that we have an understanding of how to be a good digital citizen. And that is our focus today. We are talking about being awesome on the internet, being internet awesome. Be Internet Awesome is a program by Google to help uh, learners like yourselves out there develop some of these skills to be smart and alert and strong and kind and brave online. So that's what we're doing today. We're talking about being Internet Awesome. Just so you know, we're going to start some activities really soon. We've been talk, 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 and it's going to be your turn soon. But this is YouTube Live, which means you have the opportunity to pause, rewind, and replay anything we do. So if for some some reason you get you know caught up, you don't even have enough time to finish the task, remember you can just hit pause on this and join up with us again when you are ready. So we've been talking and I wanna know who's out there. You can hear us, but I wanna hear you. So this is how this will work today. We have a Google form and some of you might have had some opportunities to use this tool already today. What will happen is when you get the link to our form, when you see the special URL to this form, the first thing you'll do is put your first name only. Because we're talking about being smart online, we want to really emphasize that part. We're just sharing your first name. And then several times we'll ask different questions. I'll tell you what the first question is in just a moment. But no, you're going to open up a Google form. You're going to insert your first name. It'll be the same thing every time, right? And then each time we'll ask a different question and you're gonna put your answer there ready to go. So here's question one, just because we wanna make sure, is this thing on, are you guys connected? Let us know. Submit the form, you see that URL there, uh, the cc.page slash steam, steam 6D, that's the name of the session we're in, we're in Steam 6D. Um, and go ahead and put in your name and your grade. What grade are you with? And I know Jonathan and our friends are going to be back there. Hopefully we start seeing some answers. We want to make sure that we are connected. How's it going, Jonathan? Oh, it's going amazing. I'm getting tons of, of things coming out. We got Rona, you know, coming out there. Anna, Selena, Ranveer. Oh, here we go. We got some kids from grade six, four, five. This is amazing. Miss Britt's class, Sean, Chloe. Hello. Wow, this is this is this is flowing like crazy here. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to shout out to everyone, but it's going it's going nuts. Good job. Awesome. So remember, that's how it's going to work today. Is we're going to go the cc dot page slash steam six d. So let's go ahead and continue on. And no, remember, we're talking about being internet smart. When you fill things out on the internet, like you did just now on that Google form, you have to be smart about the kind of information you share. Because information you share online can be seen by lots of people. And sometimes those things that go on the internet stay there for a very long time. So you have to be smart. Be internet smart about the things you put on the internet. As we continue on, we have to make sure that we keep our private details private. We're going to be smart when we use the internet. So we want to keep those private details private. And really importantly, know that when you do post things on the internet, whether that's in your Google Classroom, whether it's on some kind of social media that you use or perhaps your parents use, know that when you post things, you have to consider how sometimes people might uh, perceive them. Maybe you might say one thing and someone thinks something else. So when you're considering what you put out on the internet, you want to make sure that your digital footprint is uh, a good one the message that you share about you, let's be real smart about it, okay? So the internet again, we talk about the internet being an amazing place. So here's our next question. And the question's going to be this, what is something you love to do on the internet? I'm gonna answer mine first. And that is, I love to use the internet to gather recipes. So I will gather recipes uh, for cookies to bake or cakes to bake. My daughter and I love to do that. I'm going to go ahead and call out uh, some of our, 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 our guests here. How, what are some of your favorite ways to use the internet, George? Oh, wow. Um, an easy one for me is, is, is it's, it's a great way uh, to get caught up on what I missed from the day before when it comes to sports and the latest news. So I'm uh, 
as you can probably see my background here, I'm, I'm a soccer fanatic. So I, I love, I love watching uh, and, and playing soccer or football. And I use the internet a lot to get caught up on highlights and things that I missed in terms of games for the day from the day before. So I, I really, um, I love, I love using the internet and watching videos on, on those highlights uh, the day after. And things like that. Oh, yes. Got to keep up on those sports, right? Go yeah. team. <laughs> uh, very cool. Uh, Charles, what about you? What are some ways that you love to do to use yeah, the internet? Um, now that a lot of us are staying at home, um, I watch a lot of videos on, on workouts. So kind of following the, the videos online while, while um, I, I have my fitness routines. Very, very cool. Jonathan, do we have any friends out there sharing some of their favorites? Yeah, we got, we got a lot from Miss Brit's class, uh, so, you know, playing Roblox and games. Wasfi uh, said homework. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I, I, that was definitely not the thing I love to do on the internet. But uh, you know, we have we have a lot. Trevor was saying he loves to play rhythm games and FPS games. Um, Lily, I like to talk. I like to see my friends over Facetime. I know that's what my daughter loves to do right now with with, uh, with the internet and the things that she wants to do. But a lot of games, a lot of video games, and a lot of talking to people. Very, very cool. The internet is amazing. So, you know, along those lines, as we talk about being smart on the internet, you guys can keep adding your ideas into that form. But no, you know, I like to think about websites and the internet um, using this analogy about a traffic light, right? As children, as kids, uh, we have to make sure we're really mindful about the kinds of websites we visit. And for me, when I'm thinking about websites and evaluating the websites I need to be using, I want to find one that's green. Green, good to go, just right for me. That means it doesn't ask for personal information. Maybe it, it is um, games and activities that are designed for young learners, not a lot of violence. Uh, sometimes we come across websites that will pop up a, a message that says enter some personal information like an email address or a phone number. When I see those, I think of that with, with a yellow light. Maybe I should pause, reach out to a, a parent or a teacher and say, hmm, is this the right website for me? And some websites, as I'm trying to be smart about what I do online, I evaluate that and I think, is this the right place for me? And maybe the right answer is reaching out to that trusted adult. And of course, I know that sometimes on the internet, I come across some red light sites, right? Mm, this makes me feel a little funny. There's some violence or language or it's asking, you know, maybe there's strangers trying to talk to me. So when you're choosing activities, I love seeing that you guys love to read, code, play video games. Those are the great kinds of websites that we should be there. Uh, but knowing that part of being internet Mart is always choosing those activities that are just right for you. Green light sites. Now, as we go through today, we're going to be talking a little bit about Be Internet Awesome and Interland, which those of you who are watching this live right now, um, this is a game you can play later. When we're done with this live broadcast, Interland is a place where you can go to practice and reinforce some of these ideas that we're talking about today. For example, uh, Be Internet Smart, that's our first concept there. Uh, there's a whole game called Mindful Mountain that talks about how you can share with care. So hopefully when we're done today, your teacher gives you some time to go ahead and uh, play some of those games about how to be internet smart. We're gonna scoot on to the next topic here and that is being internet alert right? Being aware, I just kind of taking a good look, right? That critical lens to make sure that what we do is, is right, right? So make sure that when you see things online, know that you should evaluate it. You should make those judgments we were talking about. And also understand that not everything you read online is true. Would you believe it? Not everything on the internet is accurate. So um, when you are internet alert, you're just aware and being critical. Hmm. Uh, after that, you also want to make sure that your personal information is safe, right? Make sure that just because a box pops up and says, hey, what's your name? Is it appropriate? Now, today we're asking you to add your name, but remember, we were very aware to say just your first name. We don't want any private details. Keep that personal information about where you live, where you're from. We want to keep that safe. And of course, we also want to make sure that we only speak to people we know. When it comes to chatting online, you want to make sure that we're doing it in a way that's safe. So we have a little activity here. And let's just say this happened. You get a text message on your cell phone, on your cell phone, and you don't recognize the number. And it says, hey, this is Corey. Remember me from last summer? And you're thinking, last summer, I was at camp. Where did I go? What did I do last summer? Corey, I don't remember this person. 
I want to stop and think. If I don't take any of my uh, panel members here who want to volunteer, anyone have any thoughts or ideas? Like, what do you think a student might do? What, what are some good suggestions that we could do at this moment, this very moment? What might you do? Anyone want to volunteer? Are we looking like what I would do? Absolutely. Hmm. I've I've had some of these weird random like text messages, and I I don't I don't know I I I kind of just hit delete. <laughs> like I don't know you delete. Yeah, yeah, that definitely could be one opportunity. Anyone else that have any ideas they want to add there? What are some? What do you think these kids should do? They get this message. What would be some good ideas here? I, I'm with Jonathan too. I think I would either delete or or, or maybe just ignore it. Awesome. Yeah. So a couple suggestions that we have for you here. And one of them is that just block that person, right? It might feel rude if you actually do know her, but if you're sure you didn't meet anyone named Corey last summer and she's sending you texts or maybe oversharing about herself, it might be fine just to block that person or just ignore it. That's another choice. That would be a great choice for what to do with a message like that. Just don't respond. Um, if you think maybe it might be appropriate, of course, with parents' permission to say, hi, Corey, do I know you? It could be a safe option if you aren't sure whether or not you met her and you wanna figure it out. But remember when you do that, you wanna find out a little more, you wanna get a little more information, but make sure you don't say, oh yeah, we met at camp so-and-so, right? Don't add those extra details for yourself, but maybe ask for them because if this is a legitimate person who is trying to reach out to you, maybe that's the right choice if you're you know, working with an adult and you do remember meeting a lot of friends at a place you know, in the past. And of course, uh, you know, someone might say this, I don't remember you, but we can still meet sometime. That's not a good idea, right? We know that you should never offer to meet with anyone you don't know. So as we go through here, I want to ask, what would you do? Out on the form, what do you think you should do? Would you A, block her, B, ignore her, C, ask for some of those clarifying details, or meet her over in the form? We'll give you just a few seconds. What do you think? What do you think going on? I see a lot of uh, ideas, Jonathan. You see any, any good suggestions going on in there? Well, yeah, there's been tons from Ms. Hodd's class saying like, you know, just let it go. You know, we've had some people saying like, who are you texting back like something mean? But I, I would probably, re you know, not engage in that way. Um, I know Ms. Mitchell's class, you, you said, go tell your parents. Um, that was from Chloe. Uh, Angelina says that I don't answer the person. Um, we did have someone say, oh, K uh, Caitlin said, ask the name of the camp. Maybe you want to ask some more clarifying questions. Um, but many, many people are saying, you know, A, block, uh, B, ignore. Um, and there are some C's, you know, Philemon and uh, Matthew have said, ha have said, ask for more details. So. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very cool, right? You wanna know, you wanna make sure that you're making that decision that's right for you. And always when it comes to strangers, I would make sure that your parents are involved in these decisions or a trusted adult. So very cool. We're talking about being internet alert, right? That's that next layer there, being aware, being alert. And of course, if you want to know more about being alert on the internet, you can go to Google's Be Internet Awesome and play Interland. And the one for Be Internet Alert is actually called Reality River. And it says, don't fall for fake, right? This person, Corey, very well could be a fake. And we want to make sure that we uh, practice what we might do in those situations where we don't fall for fake. So the next one here, just continuing on this conversation about how to be awesome on the Internet is, of course, we want to make sure that we are Internet strong, uh, Internet strong has a little bit to do with the security end of this because we want to make sure we use strong passwords. Using strong passwords is very important to keep our information secure and safe. Uh, a suggestion we have, and this doesn't, you know, a lot of adults even struggle with this idea, is to have different passwords for different websites. I know sometimes people will always have the same password everywhere and then maybe that isn't the most secure choice. Um, keep your passwords private. Uh, and if you have the opportunity, maybe you want to use like the lock screen on your phone so your phone accidentally, your, uh, actually just automatically goes to sleep when you walk away from it, or your computer or your monitor too. If you walk away from your computer for too long, should it just put itself to sleep, like use a lock screen. And there are other ways you can protect yourself too. I use a password manager that's tied to my, my Chrome browser, which means 
Chrome, Google Chrome, the browser saves all my passwords for me and I have a lock screen on my device. So my information is very secure, but because I have that password manager, I don't have to try to juggle and remember a bunch of different passwords. And there's some other things like two-factor um, identification. Sometimes when I go to a website I haven't been to before, it'll say, hey, can we text you a special code so you can connect your account and we can be really sure it's you? Being strong on the internet has to do with being um, secure, strong and secure. When it comes to passwords, you know, there's some tips we have here and there's some do's and don'ts. Creating a strong password. Do use at least eight characters. Make sure you combine letters and numbers. Make it memorable. If it's something you can remember, then you won't necessarily have to write it down somewhere where someone can find. Um, use different passwords for different important accounts. I know in that make it memorable part, part for me, sometimes I'll take some of my favorite song lyrics. I'm going to date myself a little bit and say I used to love the Goo Goo Dolls. And there's a song and the main lyric was, I just want you to know who I am, right? That was the song. So my password was I, J, W, do you see what I'm doing here? So like maybe the name of your favorite book, you can use acronyms, meaning the first letter from each part of a phrase you use, like, or a team, you don't want to use the team name, but maybe like a saying or a, a slang of some kind, using acronyms or key letters from that, something that you're going to remember, but maybe no one would just guess. When it comes to the don'ts, right, we need to focus on make sure, making sure we know what are some, some bad practices or bad ideas are here too. Don't include information like your name, your address, school IDs, none of that belongs in a password. Don't make it easy to guess. Never use the word password. Anyone ever done that? I, I've done it before. It's, it's been a while, but I have. Uh, don't share it with anyone besides perhaps your parent or guardian. And try not to write them down in a place where someone can find them. If you need to write them down, make sure it's a super secure space. Uh, passwords, that's how we can be internet strong. We're going to play a fun little activity right now, and that is this. In the, in the chat. Will you please, we're going to have a little bit of fun, share with us a really bad password. Go ahead and take a minute and thinking of all those do's and don'ts we put in there, what would be a really, really bad password? Jonathan, will you share with us what some of our friends are uh, adding in there? I could, but I was wondering, I wonder, George or Charles, do you have a really bad password before I uh, share some of the students? Yeah, I think things like um, just A, B, C, D, or one, two, three, four. Yeah, those are yeah. those are terrible. Um, one, two, three, four <laughs> password as a default is 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 a really bad one too. In uh, my Layla, oh sorry, I was gonna say in my school board, um, sometimes the tech people used to uh, have our password. They call it change me, but there are people whose password would be change me for years. <laughs> Yeah, Layla, Layla puts, hi, this is my password. That actually might be slightly okay in, in a way because it's so long, but um, many, many, uh, uh, Cheyenne has password one. Um, we have, uh, um, Nayla says one, two, uh, one, 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 one. Um, Seb says zero, 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 zero. Uh, so there's a lot of really, uh, yeah, password seems to be the, the very uh, one. Julian says Julian, that's what his password would be. Um, I, I know I've had many students do that. They they made they made their passwords, uh, their names uh, or their parents' names. I know there's a website that has the top 200 most common passwords, and one two three four five six is the most used password. Um, and picture one is the next one that is often used a lot. So, you know, you kind of want to be careful of those. Very cool, yes, because we, of course, want to be internet strong. And one of the most important things we do to be strong is to have a nice, strong password. Now, securing your secrets, that is the next game in Interland. Remember, when we're done here, uh, you uh, might have permission from your teacher to go play this game, Interland. And one of the, the lands in Interland uh, is called the Tower of Treasure. And that's where you can learn and practice more about securing your secret. So using Google's Be Internet Awesome, uh, the Tower of Treasure will help you practice the skill of being internet strong. Here comes another one now. And it's a real important one. I think, Jonathan, I know you have a passion for this too. But uh, being kind, right? Um, 
what does it mean to be kind? And of course, remembering that how you act in person is how you should act online. It's important to be you on the internet and, and to also treat others the way you want to be treated. And the words you use matter. So try to choose the positive opportunities whenever you can. Um, I don't know about you. I know a few grownups, probably my friends here uh, the same way. I have some friends on the internet who aren't always kind, right? They don't always choose kind. So just making sure that you treat others the way you want to be treated and that you choose kind. Um, I don't know if there's anything you, any of you want to elaborate there on um, being kind and being you, Jonathan. Well, I, I know for myself, like, the, the the people I meet in the world, they, they often say, oh, you're exactly like like you were on, on online. And I think that's the message that you want. Whoever you are, whoever you meet, they want to know who you are. Um, so whatever you put out there, it's going to stay there forever. That's something you want to think about. It's forever. Even if you think it's gone, it's not. So that same image is always there. I don't know about George or, or Charles. I'm with you, uh, Jonathan. So, you know, uh, just be the same person that you are in person online. I think that's super, super important. And it's also very important to um, really think about what you're putting out there online, right? Can people can take it in a different way or a different context? So just being true to yourself and, and, and um, uh, being the same kind of person you are in person and shouldn't change uh, if you're online uh, as well. Yeah, yeah, just plus one to that. Um, you know, try, you know, treat someone who how how you would like to be treated, right? So that is the golden rule, right? We want to make sure. And for a lot of people, you know, we talk about how you know I remember a time when there was no internet, but for a lot of you, the internet has been a part of your life, your whole life. So when we talk about being digital citizens, right? For some. For some of us, that really is just being a citizen because so many of us are so immersed in the internet. We're a part of it. It's a part of us. It's how we connect with our school sometimes. It's how we connect with our family. We are citizens of the internet because we're a citizen of the world today. Digital citizenship should just be citizenship, being a good person all the time because the internet's everywhere and we should be a good citizen everywhere. So uh, a couple examples we want to go through here, you know, this is, you know, that idea of how you share your message. And this is part of the Google Be Internet Awesome collection, talking about using positive talk. And there's a couple photos here. One girl's she's doing the floss there. And it's like, nailed it. That could be one caption to use. And someone who isn't choosing positive says, awkward, not even close, right? So we want to make sure that, you know, even in those situations, we try to choose positive. Youngest scientist in the world, nerding out, hashtag lame, right? Choosing positive whenever. Um, that is our goal. So here's your chance. When you see something online, for example, this, someone who isn't choosing positive might say, show off, right? However, what is something better you could say? You're online, your friend posted this cool photo of uh, you know them scoring the winning goal, and some people might choose the less than kind option like show off. What positive caption or comment might you make for a friend who posted a photo like that? The next, the next question, what, what's a positive thing you might say to someone there? Oh, good shot. I see some coming up now. Jonathan, you wanna share some others that you yeah. see? Wait, wait, Ava says, nice job. River says, good shot. That was a, that was a nice one. Uh, Tanya says, nice job. I'm impressed. Um, good job, girl. Uh, that was a, that's a good one there. Awesome. Um, we have a lot of congratulations. Um, let's see us as, whoa, you're a good soccer player. Congrats on scoring the winning goal. I love the inference on making sure that that's the winning goal there. Man, so many great positive comments being come in. Hashtag impressed from Josh. Putting it, putting everything in there now too. That's amazing. I love this. Uh, that kids are really just like grabbing onto that idea of choosing kind, right? Sometimes when um, you know we want to like be playful and pick with pick on our friends, you know, we might choose the less than kind option, thinking that that's just fun. But when we go back to that idea of how people perceive things, right, or how people take your messages, when you post messages online, even if you think you're just being playful. 
uh, you know, if you don't choose the positive route, sometimes it could be uh, perceived wrong and you could hurt someone's feelings. So I am so excited to see all of these responses that are, you know, uh, girl for goal. Love it, Lucas. Love it. These are great. Oh, you guys, kids, kids are, like always make my heart just so happy because I know, wow, how do you do it, says Morgan. This is great stuff, Jonathan. <laughs> Choosing kind. Kindness really counts. It matters. And it's one, like, it doesn't cost anything to be kind. It's one of the easiest things we can do uh, to make someone feel better about themselves is to take the kindness in our heart and share it with others. So, oh man, love it. This is, this is great. So being internet kind. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about this, of course, you can go over to the uh, Kind Kingdom. That's the next game in Interland where you can practice uh, sharing the kindness. And that's what this particular game does. It gives you opportunities to share 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 positivity and share the positivity with others because sometimes maybe you see someone who's feeling a little down and the best thing you could do is share some of your kindness to uh, lift them up uh, and and that is the kindest thing you can do is just try to lift someone up to be happy so here we go as we continue on let's talk about this another word another big one and I just want to try to you know maybe sure we come together for a definition on this when we say, brave. I'm going to choose that word brave. I'd love it if you could in the chat tell me when you think brave, what does that mean? What does it mean to be brave? And even more so, if you could share who is someone that is brave out in the chat, who someone is brave in your mind? I'll let my friends here volunteer. Any, any thoughts that pop into your mind? Who's someone that is brave? I, I can't name a, a specific uh, person, but I can I, I can give you kind of an example. Um, for me, what makes someone brave is that when you get that kind of feeling when something just might not be right or just something might seem off or you just want to question something, just being able to to kind of speak up and maybe looking into things a bit more, ask questions. Um, for me, that's, that's a sign of brave, bravery. Um, yeah, just being able to speak up and just kind of question things a little bit. Awesome. Very cool. Anyone else have, any, have anything they want to share? Yeah, I, again, can't can think of a, a, a real personal a name, but a, a fictional character like Spider-Man, right? Uh, you, you know, uh, uh, carrying that responsibility and, and acting on it. I think I think that, that can be called brave. Yeah, we've, we've gotten some uh, some superheroes are put in here. Uh, Dua, she mentions Terry Fox, you know, being one of the brave Canadians that we can talk about. I'm thinking of Autumn Peltier, uh, who is a water walker um, that is a, a young a young child activist to, to talk about water in Canada. You know, for me, brave means that you step outside of that comfort zone and you, you're able to take that that step, no matter what the cost, no matter what you give up, that being, being that brave. Um, Brooklyn, says that she's, or, or Brooklyn says, I'm brave. Um, Mark is brave, choosing when to step up and do what's right. Um, there's a lot of great, uh, oh, Malala from Miss Dermot's class. Malala is a great person who, is, who has shown that bravery. Um, Mia says, Isabella is brave. She takes risks like standing up for me. Oh, it's great. Shout out to your friend there. Uh, Vi, strong, fierce. Uh, my dad or myself, because I went to um, to many things in life. Wait, everyone is brave, no matter who you are. I like, I love this. I love all the uh, the amazing thoughts around being brave. And uh, uh, Martin Luther, Dr. Martin Luther King from Manda, a lot of great, great names. Um, and I love the fictional characters that are being put in here as well as good examples of them. Um, but yeah, oh, Rosa Parks, yeah. Phyla Desmond, if you were thinking of uh, another Canadian um, that has done some really great, brave things to talk about. Wow, I love it. Yes, these are great. You know, being brave really means to, uh, you know, put yourself out there, maybe even if it means taking a hit somehow, like taking harm somehow, whether that's, you know, because other people are going to, you know, look down on you or maybe because it's a little bit scary. 
putting yourself out there, you know, to protect someone else is part of being brave. Uh, and there are a lot of people, we, like we do, we have those fictional characters, the superheroes. We have the real people from life right now and from history. I saw Malala. We saw those people who are being brave and standing up for what they believe in and to protect others. And of course, we know that, you know, people in our own lives are brave and they protect us. Uh, I saw a uh, frontline workers, I saw first responders, um, so many people um, can can fit that bill. Like they, people are standing up for others. And I think brave and kind, they work so close together, right? Because being brave is a very kind thing to do, but it really does mean to take a risk uh, in order to help others, right? If we wanna just put a definition out there, being brave means taking a risk to help others. So that can exist in so many parts of our lives, but being internet brave, that's a conversation to have. What should you do when you see something that makes you uncomfortable online, right? What's the right thing to do? Maybe someone posts something mean, maybe someone posts some private information about someone else, maybe someone uses some unkind words. And having that, that bravery to say, when should I reach out to, to a trusted adult? When should I get someone else involved? And and for so long we get this this feeling like, oh, is that tattling? Is that a bad thing to to shout that out to to point that out to others? But if you think that it could be hurting someone's feelings, or you know maybe someone posted a picture that they did something bad to, you know drew silly faces on it, or maybe even you know wrote mean words on someone's image, you know you have to stop and put yourself in their shoes and think, hmm, how would this make me feel? And if you don't like it, then then the brave thing might be to stand up and find that trusted adult and, you know, call it out. Let's find ways. And if you can't do it yourself because you're young or because you don't have the, you know, the right access to be able to do that, maybe the right thing is making that decision. When do I bring in a trusted adult to um, help a situation? So, oh, my goodness. We talk about being awesome online. And I know I love seeing all these great responses in the chat. And that tells me that you guys are awesome online. You're using kind words. You're thinking, you know, reaching into your hearts and finding these big ideas. You guys are internet awesome. And I'm so thankful that we have these resources from Google about to help us practice, be smart, alert, strong, kind, and brave. Now, we are going to wrap up our session in just a couple moments, but I want to remind you about uh, Interlink. Right, that tool out there, that fun game is something that your teacher may give you permission to do now, or maybe that's something you can do in your own time later. But know that when you go to Google's Be Internet Awesome, you can find Interland. And Interland is a bunch of games that are appropriate for students, probably gr about grades three through eight. Uh, is the right age range there. And it's just some fun interactive ways to reinforce these ideas of how we can all be internet awesome. It is about time to start wrapping up, but I would love this one last question if you could share out there as we share some reflections as well. Uh, what, what's something you think you can do? Sometimes kids feel like, oh, I'm too young. Um, I don't have any um, real ability to influence the people around me because I'm so young, but I disagree with that because I know that elementary learners um, have a lot of voice and they have lots of opportunities to put their feelings out there and share with others. When it comes to being internet awesome, what are some things that you can do as a young adult getting ready to be, uh, you know, as you're moving on in the years, right? Some of you might be, you know, moving from an elementary school, maybe into the next level of schooling. What are some ways that you can be internet awesome? If you want to go ahead and just kind of reflect on some of the ideas that we shared here, we'd love just to take reflection, right? Think about what are some of your key takeaways and learnings? How can you be internet awesome? And any, any um, reflection wrap ups we want to do here in the studio, that would be wonderful. I can chime in with a quick reflection. One of my favorite and easiest ones that Susan mentioned is, is just being kind. Um, that doesn't cost anything. Um, it's, it's relatively easy and, and believe it or not, it's, it's contagious. Um, it's amazing to see um, how kindness can kind of be paid back or, or, or kind of brought forward just by being kind yourself. So that's, that's one of my favorite ones and an easy one for me. Thank you for sharing, George. 
Yeah, we have a lot of uh, great, uh, great people mentioning here about the, you know, just being kind. Uh, Anna Shrikja, uh, Jonathan, Mavi, Charlotte, have all chimed in with some amazing uh, ideas around um, just just learning about being brave and being kind. Um, I'm loving uh, everything that's that's been put into the chat, and I know for myself, the the biggest thing for you know being internet awesome is just learning about what's out there and who is your you know who who can you go to when you need help, right? Who who is it that that is safe? Who can I talk to? Who is who 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 am I able to uh, share what what I've seen or what I've what I what I may need help with? Awesome. Any other last minute thoughts out there? I know sometimes it's scary, right? When you're out there and you and you feel like, oh, is it the right decision? Is this the right decision? Should I should I tell on someone? And and being brave and being kind, uh, you can accomplish amazing things just by. Uh, being you and just being awesome with other people, right? Being connected and being kind with others. So uh, remember Interland, I want to put that up one more time. We are wrapping up a touch bit early because I wanted to have some time for you to be able to get on there and play. So hopefully as long as your teacher um, says that is an okay thing for you to do. Remember, you can go to Google's Be Internet Awesome. And if you just Google search Be Internet Awesome, you're going to find Interland and on Interland is a place where you can practice um, all of these ways to be awesome. Oh, any last minute thoughts there? I just want to say thank you for your time and thank you for, for choosing this uh, to learn just a little bit more about some of these ways that we can be the best version of ourselves uh, in, in every situation and especially when we are online. Yeah, I was give some some end shout outs to Azaran. I know Co Chloe and Kush. Um, thank you for being here, Tanya. Uh, we have Miss um, Foster's class and Miss Renda's class. There's a lot of big classes that have been out there. Um, so thank you so much for being part of this lesson and uh, helping helping us out. Uh, Charles and George, do you have any final last words before we uh, say goodbye? Uh, I was just going to say thank you for allowing me part of the session. It, it was great being here and seeing kind of the comments uh, coming through and, and and just learning with you on how to be internet awesome. I think I think it's a great resource and it's an easy one, right? And this is kind of the first step into being awesome is just understanding what you need to do and how to get there. And this is a great and easy first step. So kudos to, to the group here and everyone for jumping on uh, to the session. It's been great. I just want to say thank you to everyone here as well. It, it was a great time and, and really love the great interaction that we have on our comments and, and, and answers. Uh, super excited to see how many of you are all excited about being internet smart, alert, strong, kind, and brave. So can't wait to go into Interland and, and, and play those games. Thank you so much for being here, gentlemen. Thank you, Jonathan, and thank you, friends. Um, so cool to have Googlers here today. We have our Googler Tooglers. Uh, I actually saw a, a question in the chat that says, do Googlers Google things? <laughs> Absolutely, all so, the time. Uh, we love the internet and we love the Google things. And thank you so much again. We're going to wrap up now. Hope you get a chance to play Interland. And please, please, please remember to be internet awesome. Take care, everyone. Thank you so much for being here and uh, have a great day.